Yo, 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 what is up, YouTube Nation? We are back with another Diablo 4 video. Today, we are going to be talking about something that I've been getting a lot of questions about, and that is, what are the best items for Sorceress? What stats should I go for for each single piece? Uh, so today, we are going to be talking about that. I'm going to talk about the best legendaries. I'm going to quickly mention a little bit of my Paragon board as well, but it's not going to be super in-depth. Um, so let's get right into it. So for your helmet... This is what you want. And this is basically my own personal bis list. And I'm going to explain to you why. Maximum life, cooldown reduction, max mana, and then crowd control duration. Now, plus crowd control duration is a super underrated stat. But basically, on high tier keys, a lot of people will tell you to go for armor. And on high tier keys, armor actually really, really falls off when you're fighting mobs that are much higher level than you. Um, so armor kind of becomes a, a becomes a useless stat as soon as you're fighting these really high level mobs in like these plus 80 keys. So for end game, uh, crowd control duration is a lot better because it just allows your freeze to last much longer. You can see here my Nova is 5.22 seconds. I take this off and it's 4.78 seconds. That's going to allow you to proc more ice charge enchantment because as long as they stay frozen, you're continuously proccing this and that's going to allow you to get more mana regen. Uh, it's going to allow you to just do more damage essentially and also take less damage. So super, super underrated stat that not a lot of people are telling you to pick, but this is for sure the best in my opinion. As far as chest goes, you want to go for Raiment of the Infinite, pulls mobs in, makes it easy to group mobs, and it allows you to access those multiplicative um, modifiers for stuns. So this is super, super important. It allows you to deal with those annoying like suppressor elite packs, for example, very, very easily. You just blink on top of them, Nova, immobilize them, and then one-shot them. Um, as far as gloves go, this is universally the best for every single sorcerer's build. Attack speed, lucky hit, crit chance, and then plus rank of whatever your main skill is. So if you are a uh, chain lightning sword, you want plus four uh, chain lightning. If you are an ice shard sword or, you know, a blizz sword or whatever, uh, you want plus four of ice shards. Um, in terms of legs, you want damage reduction, most important stat, damage reduction from distant enemies, uh, maximum life and then damage reduction from close enemies. Now you could get armor. I haven't found one with damage reduction from close enemies, like a pair of legs. So this is what I'm using right now. Um, but uh, you can go damage reduction from burning enemies as well. Very viable. Now, if you also uh, about the chest, don't want to use uh, this chest and you want to opt for a more defensive build that just kind of sits back and uh, spams damage in freezes, that's completely fine. And in which case, this is what you want. Damage reduction from close enemies, maximum life damage reduction from enemies that are burning or plus armor uh, and then damage reduction so out of these max life damage reduction from close enemies and damage reduction total uh, overall the one at the bottom there are the most important the last stat a little bit more flexible boots the most important stats on your boots are going to be plus ranks of nova and plus ranks of teleport and mana cost reduction now every single sorcerer's build on a high end doesn't use a basic skill so that means you're spamming a core skill the whole time you're spamming mastery skills and you're spamming cooldowns you're not using you know a, a frost nova or an arc lash or something like that unless you're playing arc lash build literally um but you don't use a basic skill so that means you're very thirsty for mana this is going to offset that so most important here is the mana cost reduction and the plus ranks of nova and teleport the last stat could be ice armor could be movement speed personal preference as far as staffs go I'm going to talk a little bit about staff and the difference between a staff and a one hand offhand because a lot of people ask me about that as well. Staff, this is the pixel perfect staff. This is the best it's gonna get. This dropped for me yesterday actually. Uh, vulnerable damage, crit damage, core skill damage, and intelligence. And if you're having a wand, these are the four stats that you want on the wand as well. Um, now, as far as offhands are concerned, you would want cooldown reduction, mana cost reduction, resource generation, and uh, where it says all stats, you would actually want it to say crit strike rating. So this is not quite the best, but it's pretty good. Um, now, the difference between staff and a one-hand offhand is you'll have more mana regen, you'll have more lucky hit, and you will have more cooldown reduction with a one and an offhand. So that's why a lot of people are opting for this. Uh, you'll have more attack speed as well. But with a staff... There is a lot more damage. The staff, just base-wise, will do a lot more damage than an offhand and a wand to, uh, combined uh, if they're at the same, you know, uh, item power. That's one thing. The other thing is your legendaries. Now, a lot of people uh, mistaken, mistakenly think that a wand and an offhand is better because you get two legendaries. Uh, but actually, you get your best legendary and then you get your second best legendary. But with a staff, you get your best legendary... 
twice. So you get your best legendary and your best legendary again, you know, because it's double the value. And this is very important as well, especially when it comes to aspect of control, uh, which is what you want on your staff. Uh, unless you're playing an ice spikes based build, but uh, if you're playing, you know, a standard ice shard build, this is for sure what you want on your staff. And the reason why is because this triple dips. So if a target is frozen, you only deal 66% more uh, increased damage. But if a target is stunned, frozen, and immobilized, you actually deal triple damage. So this triple dips, and being a staff, it's already doubled by default. So this will make your damage skyrocket, and that's what's going to allow you to really hit in the millions. Another thing that you want is this uh, necklace here with ranks of the Devouring Blaze. Most important thing on a neck is Devouring Blaze and mana cost. Now, a lot of people like plus ranks of all defensive skills. I'm not a big fan of that, um, but you can get plus ranks of all defensive skills as well as instead of where it says intelligence, you could say you could get cooldown reduction. In my opinion, this is actually the best necklace in the game for my build, which is more of a blizzard based build uh, with ice spikes, um, but I'm in a, kind of in the process of swapping. Uh, and for that build, you want uh, mana cost reduction, cooldown reduction, crowd control duration, and plus ranks of devouring blaze. So, no matter what build you're playing, you want Devouring Blaze and you want Mana Cost Reduction. Um, then as far as rings are concerned, you want Resource Generation, must have on every single ring. And Crit Damage, Vulnerable Damage, Max Life are all really good stats. But you could also go for Critical Strike Chance and Lucky Hit Rating. So uh, a combination of these, so you want Resource Generation and then a combination of those other stats. Uh, depending on uh, what you're lacking. If you're lacking defense, then you might want to have some more life. If you're lacking a lucky hit, well, get some lucky hit on your ring. Um, either way, though, you must have resource generation on both rings. So that, those are all the best stats. Now we're going to talk about the legendaries. Now, as far as legendaries are concerned, in my opinion, this is the best setup for one-shotting. Flame Shield lets you move through enemies, and it immobilizes them. This is going to allow you to aspect your devour access your devouring blaze, which is this talent right here, giving you increased critical strike damage, which is one of the highest value modifiers in the game. And um, it is going to uh, allow you to basically stack up this legendary as well. So very good offensively. Raymond of the Infinite is going to allow you to, you know, teleport and stack up this modifier as well. And then you're just going to Nova for that third modifier. And then your Nova is also going to make them invulnerable, uh, which is going to allow you to access all that extra vulnerable damage and also the base 20% vulnerable damage. So that is going to make your damage go from, you know, 50k to millions, uh, stacking all of those different modifiers. Um, now, you also uh, could go for increased crowd control duration. I'm kind of experimenting with that right now. But uh, another really good legendary is when you crit with a core skill, you gain attack speed. Especially if you're using a staff, this, this, that legendary is super underrated. It's super good. If you want to have more offense, double Nova, super solid legendary. If you want to have more defense, you could actually go for this uh, legendary right here. Um, you gain armor when you deal damage. Stacking up to 40%. So you could, if you want to be more defensive, have that instead of the double Nova. Completely fine. This, again, increased crowd control duration to enemies. Uh, and you deal more damage to enemies that are unstoppable, which doesn't really matter because your damage is really low on enemies that are unstoppable. But um, the increased crowd control duration is super nice because, again, Nova, 5.22 seconds. Nova, 4.62 seconds, just from that legendary. So it makes a huge difference in those higher tier keys where the mobs are super tanky and you're really going to need to do as much damage as possible while they're frozen and try to kill them before they get unstoppable. Um, as far as staff stats, um, you want aspect of control or you want the uh, Blizzard Ice Spikes Lego, depending on your build, of course. Uh, this is another super useful legendary dealing increased damage to stun enemies. That's going to make your one-shot one-shotier. And also, this is super useful on bosses. Once they are staggered, you will deal an insane amount of damage to them. Now, I don't have the uh, mana uh, restore aspect that I want. The one that I want is aspect of the Umbral, which is when you crowd control an enemy or freeze an enemy, you gain uh, a bunch of mana. Uh, so right now, I'm using Prodigy uh, aspect uh, as a temporary one, but uh, I'm looking to swap that. Uh, and then you want the Ice Shard Legendary as well. So now that we've gone through all of the items and all of the best stats, we are going to go through the Paragon board really, really quickly. We're not going to go through the entire thing. I'm just going to tell you what glyphs I went for, and then you guys can figure it out yourselves. 
aspect of, or glyph of control, glyph of destruction, glyph of the imbiber, glyph of the enchanter and frostbite. And the boards that I went for is the base board into the frigid faith board, into the ice fall board, into the static surge board into the enchantment master board i've gone for as many of these uh elite nodes as possible and uh i've gone for every single one of these glyphs so when you have a glyph uh for example this one is willpower based so you want to get all of these willpower nodes uh with while spending as little points as possible only picking these up that's going to make your glyph stronger that's going to give you more damage uh, all of those that are within this red circle so that's what i've done and uh, you guys can kind of figure out how to min max that on your own now that we've gone through the items the legendaries and the paragon uh let's showcase kind of what this build can do now mind you i am missing uh some of the damage for the, uh, because i'm uh, changing my build a little bit i am missing a couple of these uh legendaries um for um you know the ultimate one shot uh but i'm going to show you guys if we can find maybe an elite pack uh okay let's do it on this pack here so I'm just going to group them here, Flame Shield. And as you can see, I think that was like 2.6 million. The highest I've hit is uh, 7 million. So building your sorcerers like this is going to allow you to hit in the millions. And even in super high keys, I've done, I did 87 yesterday. Um, and I'm level 90, you know, I'm not even max level yet. I'm still missing also some of the renown. I'm missing uh, a lot of things here. Um, this is going to allow you to essentially one shot even the tankiest mobs in the game so uh this is in my opinion the most optimal way to build your uh, character for dealing damage um the only annoying thing is that you are going to be a little bit squishy so be careful out there uh thank you for watching the video and uh, i'll see you guys in the next one peace